Hello friends, welcome back to Cafe Bagheri's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making Persian bell pepper dolme. This is a dish with a large historic and geographic footprint. Uh, just about every country from Greece and Italy all the way to India has a version of this dish. Uh, in Turkey they call it dolmas, in Persians call it dolme. There's other names throughout the Arab world. Um, any vegetable that's large enough to be able to hollow out and stuff, many um, large leaves like cabbage leaves and uh, grape leaves can be stuffed and cooked. All over Iran we have many different kinds of dolmes. This one is a slight variation of what I grew up with. My mom used to make bell pepper dolme all the time. She also made cabbage rolls and I know you will love this. So stick around and let's make some bell pepper dolme. Okay, we're gonna start by prepping our herbs and our bell peppers. Make sure the herbs are clean. This recipe calls for fresh mint, fresh parsley, and some sort of scallion or leeks. Um, I happen to have found scallions at the market. I also couldn't find regular parsley, so I bought Italian parsley, which works fine here. We also have tarragon and dill in the list. You can use all fresh, mince them real fine, or if you happen to have dried herbs, that works fine too. Just remember, if you're using dried mint or you have dried scallions or, or one of the components of this mixture, um, for, for the dried ones, you use half the prescribed amount. Uh, otherwise, they can be mixed and matched. So I have dried dill and tarragon. Um, once everything is chopped up fine, I mix them all together. Then I go to prepping my bell peppers. Basically, uh, remove the top of bell peppers and, and then hollow out the seeds and membrane from it because that's where your stuffing is going to go. Next, we're going to saute the herbs. Um, we're gonna start on medium heat on the stovetop in a skillet uh, with a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil. As usual, I use grapeseed. Um, you can use olive oil for this application as well until they start changing color and darken about a shade or two. Once the herbs are sauteed and where we want them to be color-wise, we're going to reserve a tablespoon of the herbs for the sauce and then put the rest in a bowl to use for our stuffing. We're going to use about a medium or half of a large white or yellow onion. Just mince the onion real fine. Cook the onion uh, in two tablespoons of vegetable oil on medium heat. You can use the same frying pan that you cook the herbs in. And we're gonna cook them until they're a little golden brownish on the edges. And then we're going to keep half of the onions for the sauce that we're gonna make later and leave the rest of the cooked onions in the skillet. Now we're going to add our meat to the sauteed onions. In this case, I'm using beef. You want a little bit of fat in, in the meat that, that helps the texture and the flavor of the stuffing that you're gonna put in your dolme. So I'm using 80-20 meat. It's got some good amount of fat. Uh, you can use turkey, chicken, or any other kind of ground meat that you happen to have. If you wanna go on the healthy side, turkey and chicken work as well. We're gonna add our salt, pepper, and turmeric to the meat and just stir it up to make sure it's distributed. So we're gonna saute the beef with the onion and break it up, make sure the ground meat is broken up. I use a potato masher for this application. Once the meat has changed color and all the spices have been distributed thoroughly, we're going to add the cooked rice and the herbs. By the way, 
The rice that I'm using, I use our kate, Persian kate rice recipe. We have a video on that. For this application, you can use any kind of cooked rice. You can use sushi rice. Uh, the rice leftover you have from your Chinese dinner a couple of nights ago. Now we transfer the meat and rice mixture to a medium bowl and we're going to shred our one hard boiled egg over the rice and meat mixture. Once we finish with making the stuffing, we're going to move over to the bell peppers. Bell peppers can be stuffed and cooked uh, as is, raw, but for my taste, I like it a little bit less crunchy and I want to cook it a little bit. I'm going to boil some water and I'm going to throw the bell peppers and the caps in there to get them cooked just a little bit. I also put in some sugar with the boiling water that takes the edge off of that peppery sharpness that some people may not like. You need to have a large bowl of ice water ready because we're gonna shock the boiled bell peppers. That causes the cooking process to stop immediately. Peppers are in cold ice water. We fish them out and let them drain in a colander. We're going to make our sauce now in the same skillet that we cooked onions and herbs in. Return the half of onions from the bowl and the herbs to the skillet with a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil, again on medium heat. We're gonna add the tomato paste and stir until the paste starts getting lighter in color and it starts to bloom as they say. So the tomato paste it will be very aromatic and a shade or two lighter in color. That's when you know you're ready to proceed to the next stage. At this point, you add your spices, salt, pepper, sugar. Um, many versions of stuffed vegetables and leaves, many dolmas, have some kind of dried plum, either bohara plum or, or uh, dried uh, dark plums, or even apricots can be uh, put in pitted, of course, can be thrown in the sauce to give you that tangy, sweet and sour edge that you want in this dish. Now, what I've done is I put some sugar and then at the end, when the sauce is finished, we're gonna stir in some lime juice. This is the time when we add the hot chicken broth, stir it and simmer for a couple of more minutes. You can adjust the salt and pepper at this point. Turn off the heat and push it off. And then you can add your saffron solution, um, your two tablespoons of lime juice, fresh squeezed lime juice is best always. And you can add a pinch of cayenne or other hot pepper. Uh, that's optional. If you don't want the heat, you can skip it. But just a pinch of hot pepper adds to the character of any stew or soup or sauce that you're making. So it's not a bad idea doing that right now. So our sauce is ready. Okay, we've got our meat and rice mixture ready, the stuffing. Our peppers were slightly cooked and they've drained, they're ready. Our sauce is cooked and adjusted, wonderful. So we're gonna get our pepper, and by the way, this is the oven proof dish that will fit all four of them and go in the oven. We're gonna, of course, cover it with foil before going to the oven. We're gonna get the peppers one at a time and fill them with the stuffing mixture. Just press them in to make sure you get all of the stuffing used. There you go, you wanna go up to about quarter of an inch. 
or leveled. It's, it's really, I've, I've seen them made just heaping. Uh, it's up to you, see which one you like best, right here. This is what I'm doing. Start from one end and lay them down. Now the reason I, you see me pressing that in, first of all, you want to get as much in there as you can. Secondly, the recipe ends up with a little more than you need for the peppers. And if that happens, we're going to just add it, sprinkle it in the base sauce. Now we're going to drizzle some of the sauce over each pepper to add moisture in the stuffing and the flavor of the sauce, okay? I'm gonna bring this closer to the saucepan. Here, you do about three of these for each. Now we're going to get our sauce poured into the dish at the base. But I'm gonna try not to spill it. Get all of this goodness, the onions and whatnot in there. So we're gonna kind of shake this to make sure everything's settled. It's a little bit of the stuffing that I told you, you may or may not end up, depending on how big your peppers are, you may not end up with that. I'll just sprinkle it on the sides into the sauce. Because you're gonna be serving this with the sauce in your little uh, soup bowl or plate and, and pour some of the sauce at the base of the peppers and a little bit of rice and meat in there will add to the character, make it a little richer. Now we're going to put the lids back on, one by one. Remember, what, however many toothpicks that you use to secure these on, use it for the same pepper, same amount, same number of uh, toothpicks for each pepper, so that when you are finished at the end, you know how many you need to remove. I will go just like that. See, it comes out the side, kind of at an angle like this. There. Two more here. Now, one thing I noticed, I went to three different grocery stores here in Dallas, Texas, looking for the best looking peppers, right? All the fancy colors, red and orange and yellow, have the full stem attached. None of the green ones. I went to three stores and none of them had green, bell. well, one didn't have any, didn't have any green bell peppers for some reason. They haven't had it for a couple of weeks. Now it's April of 2023. I don't know what's going on, but they had all the other colors. So I go to two other grocery stores. They had green ones, but none of them had this stem. I don't know what the reason is. If you know why green bell peppers are sold without the full stem, please comment below. That beats me. Okay, so this is now ready to go in the oven. We have preheated our oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Because I want to keep the stems kind of unbothered and untouched, I need a lot of foil to, to do a dome. So I used extra wide aluminum foil. I'm gonna come down. See, I'm not pressing down. Just make sure these sides have a good seal for the steam not to escape. Because we want the whole thing to be sealed as much as possible. And we're gonna let this thing bake for 55 minutes until done. Uh, that's that's how long it takes at 400 in my oven. So you may want to test one pepper 
and, and get the gauge on how long, what temperature does best the way you want it, the texture and, and doneness that you want. But 455 minutes seems to fit the bill, generally. The total cooking time for the dolma is 55 minutes. However, I do want to uncover it about five to 10 minutes before the end of that time to kind of let the peppers get a little char and character, which will improve the presentation a little bit and the flavor of the top. So we're gonna let it go another 10 minutes uncovered to total 55 minutes. Right now we're at 45, okay? Our 55 minutes is over. Oh, they look so good. Check this out. They are beautiful. You can see the assorted colors for our peppers makes all the difference. Try to get, the recipe I give you is for four stuffed peppers. Try to get one of each color. It makes for great presentation. You can serve these peppers family style, bring it to the table like so, and everybody um, reaches in and serves themselves. Or you can uh, place them in individual bowls and serve it individually. That's also a way you can do. All right, we're taking the toothpicks out of the last one. Make sure you don't forget doing that, okay? So we're going to serve them individually. Right here. This is a pretty one that I'm gonna serve right here. And for each serving, we're gonna put some of the sauce over and around. You, you could sprinkle some garnish like chopped, finely chopped basil or parsley. And I usually serve um, pepper dolma stuffed um, peppers with a uh, salad, like Shirazi salad or just a seasonal salad that you like. This is what you're gonna be serving. Uh, naan or any kind of flatbread makes a great accompaniment for this. You just get a piece of that and go to town. Before I do that, let me thank you for being with me today. If you like this video, please like below. I know each and every one of you watching right now are subscribers. Just in case, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell button so we can notify you when we have new videos or community posts and an occasional YouTube live may be coming your way. So thanks for being with me today. Make this pepper dolme and share your pictures with me on my Instagram account at Cafe Bagheri. I'll give you a shout out and put your pictures up, make stories of them. And let's check this out together, shall we? So you push the little hat aside, isn't that pretty? Look at this. Just get a little bit of that on your bread. That's, this is how I eat it. Again, just do with it what you will. Make it your own. I, I know the videographer lady is going to say that's a big, big bite, but I'm not going to bite all of it. Mmm. What can I say? It's perfection. Remember, the recipe is below and you can use the same stuff in recipe with all your other vegetables, tomatoes, hollowed out potatoes. And um, I will put hints in the recipe on what to change for cooking time. If you go with big tomatoes or, or potatoes, you can do this with eggplants. Make it and enjoy it. You will like this one. Oh my God, this is so good. Awesome.